too seriously. Um, it's just a comical kind of disaster film about there is a tornado on the ground um, and there are people from different sects of life that interact and they end up at the same place at the same time and you know tons of hijinks is involved in that um it is a really fun film um it's a it's a quick watch it's exciting uh there's a lot of humor in it but there's also a lot of um there's some feminism aspects to it that I really like. There is a, a, the core and the heart of the film are these three strong women that kind of save the day. Um, and, you know, they, they get stuff done. So that's something that I, I really like about the film and getting to be a part of that. But yeah, it's just a fun watch. It's a, it's a very fun watch. Um, I like weather movies personally. Uh, so it, it, it's a really good, uh, yeah, it's, it's a fun watch. And uh, Rachel, tell us a bit more. We'll delve more into uh, Cash Storm, the project in the film. Uh, was it an independent uh, production? Was it a, a limited sort of uh, budget? Uh, where did the filming uh, take place? And uh, was it shot over a short period of time? Or was it a project that was, uh, 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 dare I say, two or three terms of G to come back in terms of before finishing it off? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so it was a very quick turnaround from the time that uh, I, so the creator of this film, the filmmaker, his name is Dan Lance, Dan Lance, and he is a uh, very big in uh, this, we're in Philadelphia. He's very big in this area on the East coast of the U S. Um, and I had worked with him prior on another film. And when he talked about this, he was like, I have a role for you. And once I told him I was interested, then we were filming like two weeks later. We shot this last fall. Uh, we primarily shot in the Philadelphia and the Pennsylvania regions. Um, and yes, it was independently produced. We do have a distributor, Breaking Glass Entertainment. Um, all of those things go over my head, <laughs> the finances and, and the stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, I was, I was very lucky in this sense that I had worked with Dan before and, um, he wrote this script, I believe a year or two ago. And, um, he said that he had me in mind for one of the roles. Um, so this was a, a different process for me audition wise than it has been in the past. Okay. And Rachel, I'm curious to know an independent uh, production and obviously you're on set in terms of shooting location. You can see the sort of stunts in process. Uh, what sort of projections were done in terms of the tornado? Did you use green screen or uh, in terms of I saw some clips in the trailer in terms of the counterfeit. I imagine it was sort of counterfeit sort of money you use in terms of that uh, was uh, blowing around in that sort of tornado and sort of stuff and how did you bring those sort of visual effects to place was there something small that was magnified yes for sure um and i will say that the counterfeit money that we had was oddly real i would i would come home at the end of the day and i kept there was one in my purse and i my my brain would play a trick on me i i always would think it was real in my bag and, and it wasn't uh of course upon further inspection you can tell that it's counterfeit but that was oddly real. We had hundreds of those printed out and you could just, they were abundant. You could find them anywhere. Um, something, so a lot of it was CGI. It was green screen. We did some practical effects. Um, something that was really cool is that I had never shot one of, you know, a driving scene before. And rather than do that with a green screen, we actually had, um, we had like a big screen behind us, but there was the projection of the, the highway and the car and the field. So when we were shooting one of those driving screens, it wasn't green screen. We could actually see the projection happening, which definitely aids to the realism of it all. It really feels like you're driving. Um, and I thought that was very interesting because I had never really worked on a project that had so many effects before. So it was almost like a virtual reality sort of a, a feel to it in terms of you you could sort of put on you the sort of you're almost, uh, dare I say, doing the motions, dare I say, in terms of what you were seeing in front of you. And mm -hmm. tell me a bit about your character, Peta, uh, if I'm spelling, if I'm mentioning it uh, correctly. And mm -hmm. uh, her rule, where does she come involved in Cash Storm? Is she on the side of good, evil or she's someone that's caught up in between? 
Mm -hmm. um, so we were pronouncing it as PETA, but it's open to interpretation. You can say PETA. <laughs> uh, so yes, we uh, PETA, she uh, is an influencer. She is someone that uh, you see on Instagram that is obsessed with the algorithm, chasing that, making everything is an opportunity for content for her. Um, she live streams. And something that's really funny about her is that her brand, her persona is she is uh, the California belle of Southern fashion. Now, she's not from the South. Her mom is, but she puts a persona on when she goes live on her Instagram. She talks with a Southern accent and it's not it's not a great Southern accent either. It doesn't have to be because she's pretending it. Um, and so on the surface, you you think of her kind of, you know, you might have like a negative thought about her but then I, I just believe the character is just so well written and so well rounded you you see that she's a very very smart very kind person and she's clever um there's a lot more than meets the eye with her um she's definitely one that you would underestimate but you learned very quickly that there is a lot of depth to her and that she can stand her her ground and she's very smart and at the end of the day she's very nice she's very kind um I think she's really lovable I think um so much of her is just so funny. And I got to improvise a lot with the role as well. So there's a lot of like very silly things that I did. And I'm like, why did they keep that? <laughs> but apparently it, it fits it fits the, the character very well. So there's a lot of um, silly things that are definitely pieces of me peeking through. But I, I loved Pete. I think she's very lovable and very just very charming and lovable. I and mean, we, you mentioned it's sort of comedy, it's lighthearted humor, but in terms of the pace of uh, the movie, uh, dare we say, is it a slow build up and then we're brought into the action or straight from the off? Is it sort of, we're on a sort of certain projection in terms of the pace, it's sort of high tempo with comedy thrown in, or is there, are we to unravel the story, dare I say? I find the pace quite uh, fast, actually. It's it's very quick from the beginning. It's it's kind of guns a blazing. So, and it the runtime is fairly short too. I believe it's an hour and a half, uh, maybe a little bit shorter than that. So it is it's a quick pace for sure, and it definitely carries. Okay, and uh, Rachel, before we came on air, you mentioned about some other projects that uh, are there in the pipeline that might coming our way later in twenty twenty four that you might might come our way here in Ireland and the UK. And if so, what should we be looking out for or watching out for? Mm -hmm. Um, so I have several projects that I have completed. We're just waiting for release. Um, one that I definitely can share. Uh. Um, I worked on a really awesome uh, short film that was produced by Mango Street Labs. They are a Chicago-based production company. Um, they have a YouTube channel, and we created a really, really cool story. It's called What It Felt Like, and it's a period piece of the year 2006, which is sad to say that that's now a period piece. Um, but it, it takes place in 2006, and it's of these two... Uh, goth teenage girls and um, a summer that changes everything for them. So it's this really awesome coming of age uh, story that I got to play uh, the protagonist of. And I look nothing like what I look like right now. I am, I'm a goth emo girl, so I'm completely blacked out. Uh, so that is something that will be coming out in the near future. And then other than that, I did work on a few things, but still early on. Um, so yeah, but you can follow me on my Instagram and I always update of, you know, whatever I'm up to. And uh, Rachel, I do believe uh, Ireland, even though you're based in uh, the East Coast of America, Ireland is something that uh, you've got to uh, savor in the past. And uh, what is a particular memory or personal highlight of your time uh, spent in Ireland? The people I met, we, my sister and I, we traveled to Ireland. We did a road trip. It was April of 2023. We rented a car and we spent majority of our time in the Irish countryside. Um, and our very first stop was Kilkenny. And we went to this bar that was called Hole in the Wall. And uh, we made several friends while we were there that we're still in touch with to this day. So that, without a doubt, is my favorite part, just knowing that, you know, I have friends on the other side of the world. That that was the best part. But I love Ireland. There's 10 out of 10. No bad things to say about it. Maybe it's kind of cold in the winter, but still 
the best, the best country ever. <laughs>